Hello, good evening, guys. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Welcome to the class. Thank you for your punctuality. I do really appreciate it when you're punctual. Maybe your classmates are doing something else. But we're going to start with the class right now. Before we start with the class, I'm obviously going to go through attendance. And yesterday, I had the main session with, well, the, the private session with Freddy. And I'm going to see who I have today as well. Let me see where is your attendance. OK, here it is. OK, let's see. You're the group 23. Okay, group 23. Yesterday I stayed with, Wednesday with Freddy. So today I'm gonna stay with Harbin. Harbin hasn't connected yet. Okay, well, it's okay. Okay, um, I don't know, your classmates, do they usually connect later late to the class? Is that usual? No? Yeah, yes. Around eight eight oh six or eight ten. Okay, so they take a little bit. They take a while to connect. Okay. Anyways, but I like to start early because sometimes. What is it? I, I like to start early with the class because we have a lot of things to cover. And you also like remember attendance is not about <sighs> attendance is not about the just saying present or saying I'm here. Attendance is also about the minutes that you are connected. Okay, so they're gonna they're gonna take that into like in account because it's not only saying present but staying the. 120 minutes that you have to stay here in the class. And remember as well, it's not just about connecting to the class because every minute counts, every single minute counts. For example, here, yesterday's attendance, the big majority has 120 minutes. But for example, I have a student, Francisco Amadeo, I think he's, I don't know if he's here. Francisco Amadeo has 119 minutes, almost close to the goal. But then I have, for example, Marlon, who only connected for 59 minutes. So, and, and we can see that. We can see that in, an, in a list. So it's not like I will just like write your attendance and not write the minutes. So that's important. Okay, I'm gonna start with the attendance we have for this class and then we're gonna go again in the middle of the class. Let's see who's present right now. Axel Gabriel Rivera Rodriguez. Who's not here? Okay. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. Present. Okay. Blanca Stephanie Navarro Flores. Present teacher. David Samuel Caldames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Okay. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Erwin. Okay. Fátima Lourdes Gaitán Romero. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Oh, exactly. There you are. Francisco Madeo Villacorta Chávez. Freddy Vladimir Cortés López. I'm here. Arvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Arvin, today is your turn to stay with me like the 10 minutes at the end of, of the class. 
Okay? okay. No problem. Perfect. Kenny Esmeralda Galvez Ruiz. Madeline Yamilet Molina Gonzalez. Present teacher. Madeline, you're the one who sent a message? Yes, I okay. sent you the message. Okay, I'm gonna check it. It's because I have three other students that are named Madeline. <laughs> so that, that, there's that. Really? Yeah. Okay. Manuel de Jesus Sanchez Hernandez. Present teacher. Okay. Marlon Stanley Ramirez, I mean, Marlon Stanley, this is Stanley. Marlon Stanley Ramirez Reyes. Yes, present. Selma Cleotilde Peña Martinez. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Jessica Yanari Cortes Díaz. I don't have many students right now. Jocelyn Imelda Rivas Abarca. Present. Okay, perfect. Okay. So it it's seems. Hmm? I hear. Ah, you're just connecting yes. to the class. Yes. Okay, well, let's see. Axel, Axel is not here yet. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Okay, um, Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Okay, Fatima Lourdes Gaitan Romero. Present. Okay, uh, Francisco Amadeo Villacorta Chavez. Okay, uh, Kenny Esmeralda Galvez Ruiz. Nope, okay. Uh, Telma is not here yet. No, Telma is not here. William, no, and Jessica Yanari as well is not here. Okay, perfect. Let's start with the class. Um, every class, I would like you to practice a lot of pronunciation and speaking skills. The last class, it was a really good class because we had the time to, wait a second. Yeah, last class was a productive class because we have the time to speak and I had the time to get to know you a little bit more, just to get to know especially your English level as you spoke to me yesterday. But today we're gonna go with more pronunciations and more practices for advanced students because you are advanced students. Something that I like to do with my groups I always like to do that. Well, Janari is not here and she was my student. I don't know if I practice something of this with her, but um, something that I like to do is pronunciation practice. Sometimes people are like, like people, they will say, uh, I'm not really good in, in English because I don't have a really good pronunciation and my pronunciation is very strong or something like that. First, you need to know that pronunciation is one thing and accent is another thing. It's very different one from the other. For example, you can have a really good pronunciation, but you can have a strong accent. I don't know if that makes sense to you. For example, do you know who is Sofia Vergara? Do you know who she is? Okay. Well, she's a Latina yes. and she's the, like the best paid Latina that is in Hollywood right now, like in Los, An Los Angeles and she works at movies and TV shows and stuff like that. She doesn't have a really bad pronunciation because you can understand her perfectly, but she has a strong accent. Like sometimes it can be like really strong. What is different from pronunciation? Even if you want to, you won't get rid of your accent because your accent is part of who you are, but you can improve your pronunciation specifically. So sometimes um, if you don't practice, then you won't improve your pronunciation. I give the same example for like, I don't know. If you are going to run a marathon, tomorrow and you're supposed to run for 10 kilometers, let's say, do you think 
well, maybe you go to the gym. In my case, I don't. But do you mm. think you will be able to do it without going to the gym or without running every day? Maybe I will get tired in the first kilometer, if not in the middle of the first kilometer for me, that's me. But if I go to the gym, if I practice, I go to the park, I go to a field and I run and I run and I run and I have like a year to practice, to train. Do you think that I will, I will make it? Maybe not in the first place, but do you think I can make it? Yes, because you are prepared to do it. Training, right? I'm training. Now, here is the thing. It's the same with English. So people are like, I don't know, I can't speak English. My pronunciation is really bad and stuff and stuff and stuff. But then I go and ask, hey, do you practice? They're like, no, because I don't know. And this, like the muscles in your mouth, when you speak, do you know that you use the muscles in your mouth? You, you know that, right? We have muscles here. That's why we can move the mouth. And we have vocal cords. So they are used to speak Spanish. It's very different from English, okay? Wait a second, guys. Okay. So it's very different speaking Spanish and it's very different speaking English. So the muscles we use to speak Spanish, they are different. So we need to practice and we need to train them. Sometimes um, it's good to learn songs in English to train your muscles. That's a fun way to do it. But I have learned that doing that in virtual classes is not a good idea. Mm -mm. Because when I play a song and we're singing, one is at the beginning of the song, one is in the middle of the song, and one is finishing the song. So it's like, it, it's not a good idea. That's not a good idea at all. But there's a good idea. We can go with um, tongue twisters. Do you know what is a tongue twister? Yes, teacher. Have yes. you ever learned a tongue twister in English? Not really. No, it's not kind really. of difficult. It's kind of difficult, teacher. It is not. It is not difficult at all. You will learn tongue twisters with me, okay? Because with that, but I would like you to learn tongue twisters, but by saying them, not like, uh -huh. I'm practicing. Hearing on my mind, teacher, I'm practicing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like I go to the gym and I sit there and I'm like, on my mind, I did 100 squat today, right? Like it, I, it was a really hard work, but I didn't do it actually. So just thinking about it, it's not doing it. So what I need you to do is to go ahead and practice it. The first tongue twister that I would like to start with, let me see if I can find it. If not, what is this? Wait a second. I'm gonna find it online quicker. Okay, the, one of the first mistakes that people do uh, when they are learning English is this. For example, when I say stay, school, some things like this. Okay, one of the first mistakes, and I always like to start with this, is when you say this word. For example, let's go with Doris. Would you mind reading this word, please? Stay. Okay, thank you. Um, Manuel de Jesus, would you mind reading this word? Sure, school. Okay. Blanca, would you mind reading this one? Yeah, street. Okay, thank you very much. What I can see right now is that your pronunciation is good because you barely did this mistake or maybe you didn't do it. But sometimes when people see these kind of words, they like to add an E at the beginning because in Spanish, it doesn't make sense to have two consonants together and not a vowel 
with this. So many, sometimes many people will say, stay a school a street, which is kind of correct, but not completely. In this case, this S is just the sound of the letter S and not with an E at the beginning. It's just stay, school, street. I do say the letter S, stay, stay, school, street. But listen here, it will be very strong and it will like a big, big mistake if I say, stay, school, street. It sounds kind of the same, but it's different. Do you hear the differences? Now, yeah, stay. Yes, you add in the E. Exactly. And when I add the E, actually sometimes when you're learning songs in English, that will be the first mistake because you're adding an extra syllable by adding the E. For example, how many syllables do you see in this word? One. One. Okay. But if I say, stay, how many syllables do you see? Two. Exactly, you see? So it's a mistake to say stay because it's like I'm saying two syllables, but it's only stay. Here as well, how many syllables do you see? One. One again, but if I say es cool, it's two. You get it now? So for this type of words, um, there's a solution that I'm going to show you. Oh, one, oh, it's one, two, three, three. The other mistake that I see a lot, a lot, a lot is that we like to be like Russians. We like to say the letter R really strong, like my car. My car is blue. My car is blue. Car. It's not really strong. It's not like I'm saying my car. No, <laughs> because we don't say it like that. But you say my car is blue. My car is blue. I like blue cars. But the thing is that the tongue, maybe you know this, maybe you don't, I'm just giving you some advices. Um, the tongue needs to go in the upper part of your mouth. Just stay there, car. Oh. And it doesn't roll. The R doesn't roll, just car like that, car. My car oh. is blue. You see, it's different from saying my, my car is blue. Almost the same, but not the same. I will say it again. The first one is going to be the wrong one, and the second one is going to be the correct one. My car is blue. My car is blue. My car is blue. Do you hear a difference? Yes. Is there? Is there? Right. It's there. So one of the uh, tongue twisters that we can do to improve those two pronunciations. I'm gonna show you, <clears throat> sorry. I'm gonna show you right now. It's this one. Oh, wait, wait a second. I'm gonna, I wanna place it in a different, Wait a second. Okay. Here it is. You can see it, right? It's I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. The way that I want you to say it is quickly and say, I scream, you scream, we'll scream for ice cream. I scream, you scream, we'll scream for ice cream. I scream, you scream, we'll scream for ice cream. I scream, you scream, we'll scream for ice cream. In this part, we're practicing two pronunciations. The letter S pronunciation at the beginning of the words and the letter R, scream, no, scream, scream. So we need to practice this and you need to say it as many times as you can. And this is a um, game of words, you will say. Because I, sorry that it's, eh, it's on Pinterest. Okay, I scream means I yell. You scream, you yell. We all scream, we all yell for ice cream. You know what is an ice cream? Okay. Yes. 
And ice cream sounds almost the same as I scream. You see? So that's why it's a tongue twister. So if you try to say it slow, it will be I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Sometimes in English, like in Spanish, we like to join words. For example, I scream, you can say it together. I scream, you scream, you scream. We all scream, we all scream for ice cream. You go slow the first time, and then you try to add the speed. If you try to say this tongue twister as many times as you can, you will notice that sometimes it starts to hurt. The muscles in your, on your mouth, in your mouth, they start to hurt because they are trying to speak in a different way than they usually do. So this is gonna help you with your pronunciation. I'm not telling you that your pronunciation is wrong. It is not, it's a really good pronunciation. But if we want to improve, which is my case, I like to improve day by day, um, you need to practice these tongue twisters. So take a screenshot if you can, because we're gonna have the time to practice. Every single class, we will have pronunciation practice. And I'm gonna give you some, like as well, useful phrases, like main phrases that we can use in English. For example, idioms. You know the idioms, right? You have had that class. Do you remember what idiom that you can tell me? Do you remember one idiom? No. Not too sure. I don't remember. Can Maybe you know? feel under the weather? Under the weather. Yes, feel under exactly. the weather. Exactly. Under the weather means feeling sick, right? Like not in a good way. Um, we can say as well, piece of cake. You know what is the meaning of piece of cake? Yes, something very easy. Something yeah, very easy. It's a piece. What is it? Something that is? It's easy. Like in Spanish, we say pan comido. It's, it's almost the same, almost the same thing. Oh. And when we speak with idioms, we sound more native, more natural when speaking, right? It's not like it makes sense. It doesn't have to make sense. The only thing that it needs to have is something related. For example, when it's raining really heavy, really heavy, it's a really strong rain. How do you it's say that? Rough. It's raining? Ducks and cats. Okay. The other way. It's raining? Dogs and cats, but the other way. Frogs and frogs. I don't remember, no, but it's, it's something like frogs. Selfish. It's dogs and cats, but it's a, the other way. Cats and dogs. Yeah, it's raining cats and dogs. That's how they say it. And it's rain, r raining really strong. It's like I go outside and I say, it doesn't make sense, but it, it is just like a way to say it, okay? Oh, okay. Did you take the screenshot of the tongue twister? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to give you some time to practice with your classmates. The first thing that I need you to do is just go slow in the pronunciation and take turns. Then try to say it like three times in a row. Ice cream, you scream, well, scream for ice cream. Ice cream, you scream, well, scream for ice cream. Ice cream, you scream, well, scream for ice cream. And this is going to help you as well with one problem that we have in English. I don't know if you have had it or if you have seen a person who has it. People, <laughs> sometimes when they are learning English, they over exaggerate or overdo the pronunciation. Like, I am mean, I'm speaking English like I am doing because I can speak English teacher. And they, they do some weird things with the mouth. So, but if you practice some twisters, you're gonna be like ice cream, you scream, ice cream for ice cream. And this is gonna help you to sound more natural when speaking. You get it? Yeah? No? Yep. Excellent. That's what I like. Because sometimes I'm, I feel like I'm speaking to myself alone here. I don't know. 
Okay, um, David, you have your two. Yes, teacher. Okay. There are Wait. two of me. I'm gonna put the two of you together. Okay, there, there you go. Let's go.
teacher. Hello. Hello, teacher. Could you yeah. hear me, please? Mm -hmm. uh, we cannot share the screenshot. Could you please give me permission? Can you try now? Let me check. No, no puedo. No, really? No. Really? Could you please try, try Doris or Charby? Uh, vamos a ver. Let's see. I allow participant sharing. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. There it is. I Can you see? Wow. It's loading. The there are many. Can you see this, the, the yeah, screen? Well, no, yes. Oh, but you want me well, to share the one the, that it is? Uh, can you see? Oh. I have some different, different difficulties. Easy, difficult, easy, medium. No, but are you practicing the ice cream one? Uh, can you share the link, please? Mm -hmm. Wait a second. Uh -huh. There you go. There you have it. Thank you.
Uh-huh. Are you practicing? Yes, teacher. Yes. Yes. I try ah. to do it. Okay. Ice cream, do cream, do cream for ice cream. Okay, okay. You're okay. doing you're Is doing good? good. Yeah, you're doing good. Yeah, thank you, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> that's the attitude especially that's the attitude <laughs> okay but don't a, don't practice for a, uh, yes for to be a teacher you have to practice yes what is it for to be a teacher you have to practice yeah to be a teacher i had to practice a lot i remember my first class i was so scared i was so nervous but then i got used to it wait teacher wait 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 Oh, 2016. 15. Yeah, that was my first class, 2016. It was oh. a long time. Oh, <laughs> it was a years ago. Where did you? Um, so I was doing my teaching practice at Instituto Nacional de Sudutan. In which country? Yeah, it was here. Ah, it's Yeah, it's You yes. in Sulutan, okay? I, I do. That. Yeah, I do. Okay. Is it but hot or cold? Hot. It's hot. It's hot. Yeah, hot. yeah I've, been, I've been to um, El Transito. But El Transito, well, El Transito is one of those cities that is close to Sulutan. Closer to Sultan than San Miguel, but it's San Miguel. The transit is ah, San, San Miguel. Miguel. Okay. Yeah. Everybody's hot. The transit is hot. It's really hot. I know. I live like, do you know that Pueblos Vivos Alegría? Yes. So I live like going to Alegría. Erwin, are you talking to us because yeah. you have you're muted? I practice teacher. Ah, okay, you're practicing. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I, I leave you to practice. Hey, guys, but practice it. Practice, it means like you have to say it many times, okay? And just once. Yeah, okay, we're telling fine. them. They're going to turn on the microphone for we can actually because hear them practicing when, when, and tell them oh. if they made a mistake or not. Oh, okay, okay. When I began, when I began, it's so bad, so bad. I talk, I say, I, I scream. <laughs> So bad. After mm -hmm. that, I I I ice cream, you scream, you scream for ice cream. Yeah. Exactly. Now you're improving. You see. Exactly. That's yeah. good. Okay. I'm gonna check another classmates. Keep my, on guys told, is, my, my guys told me that so bad, so bad. <laughs> well, they were <laughs> honest. They were honest. They, they told, would yeah. say. <laughs> what my guys told me told me about uh, uh, Edwin, You say. I, ice cream. I, ice cream. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a mistake that a lot of students do. So don't feel bad about yes. it. Many, many students do that mistake. Yeah, they do. Yes. So okay, keep on practicing. As we claro, that's some work. Yeah, that's why I can turn on my camera. Okay. Okay.
Okay, welcome back again here to the main session. Well, you were practicing the tongue twister, which is a pronunciation practice. Some of you told me that at the beginning you were like not saying it completely correctly, but at the end you were able to say it better than the beginning. So I'm gonna ask you if there's any participant who would like to say it here in front of the whole class. Or are you afraid? Are you scared? Nah, I don't think you are. Well, put it, I, put it in the screen sheet, teacher. The screen sheet, you need the screen sheet. And Doris, Doris, you're gonna participate as well? I heard you saying yes. something. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. Just wait a second. I'm gonna go first with David and then I'm gonna go with you. Oh, wait a second. So, who was first? You will start. Okay. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Okay, good job. Just try to do the letter R a little bit softer. Ice cream. The letter R. Yeah, a little bit soft. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Yeah, better. That's better. Thank you very much. Let's go with Doris. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Okay, Doris, good job. The only thing is try to say the two words together and don't say ice cream. It's just ice cream. Ice cream, you scream, we all okay, wait, wait, wait a second, wait a second. In the second, well, the first one you say ice cream, the second one you say you scream. You scream, okay. There, and then we all scream. All scream, you join all, we scream, all scream. We all scream. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Okay, okay, yeah, good job, good job. You did it really good. The only advice is the same as David. Try to do the letter R a little bit softer and the E at the beginning of the letters to delete it. But you did a good job. Thank you very much, Doris. Okay, nobody else? Me, teacher. Blanca, excellent. Yeah. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Good job. That was a really good job. Thank you, Blanca. Thank you very much. Nobody else. Nobody. nobody. Me. Fatima, excellent. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Thank you for your participations. You did a good job, Fatima. With this, I'm trying to help you with the pronunciation of the letter R, as I told you before. And I'm also helping you with the pronunciation of the letter S at the beginning of words following a consonant. Okay. With this, you're gonna improve your pronunciation if you say it a lot, if you practice it a lot. Because if you only have it on your mind and you're like, that nothing is going to happen, okay? But if you say it and you say like with your the muscles of your mouth, with your vocal cords, something is going to happen and you're going to improve pronunciation. Is there anyone that at the beginning was saying it completely incorrect and then by the end of practicing a little bit more, you were able to say it better or you didn't feel any progress, improvement? Or do you feel like, like you improve saying it? No? Yes, we improve with the practice, of course. Okay, thank you, David. Thank you very much. Okay, now taking back on the topic that David asked me yesterday to help you with. I'm gonna go with, um, you told me relative, no, what was the topic? Relative, I got, I, pair conjunctions, pair conjunctions, right? That's what you wanted to know yesterday. Pair so, conjunctions, yes. Pair, pair conjunctions, it's pair conjunctions. Okay, what well, we need to understand, well, the ones that are most common, the, the most common ones are these ones. Like, not only, but, I'll, but also, oh, sorry. And then we have either, yeah, either 
or we have neither, well, I'm gonna explain something about this, neither nor and both and. These are the most common yeah. ones. Yeah. Yes. When we have to use either and when we have to use neither. Either it's affirmative statement. Neither is negative statement. So for example, Miss. either one of you can help me or neither one wanted to help me. Uh, yeah. Miss. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, do I have a question? Mm -hmm. Either is when you have a, a two options, but uh, both are positive uh, statements, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Neither, uh, when you have negative options, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, correct? Mm-hmm, that's correct. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So neither one of my friends wanted to take me to the airport, so I took a taxi. Neither one of my friends took me to the airport, so I took a taxi. Another one example with either can be, either one of you can help me if you want to. Either can either one can help me. Okay, that's like affirmative statements and negative statements. Something else that I need to add to this explanation is the following thing. This pronunciation here, let me point it out for you. Uh, this one right here. It's neither. It's correct to say neither because that's the most common pronunciation. But here's the thing. Sometimes people say it neither. Neither or neither. Neither, neither. And both pronunciations are correct. But the neither one, it's more like British instead of American English. That's something that you need to understand. Or, or some people who go to really, I, I don't know, like really famous universities, they use that word like neither. It's more formal, if you want to call it like that, but neither it's correct as well. That's the most common way of saying it. I'm just telling you this because maybe you're going to hear sometimes someone say neither. You're going to be like, no, the teacher say neither. She doesn't speak English very well. Maybe I don't, but <laughs> the pronunciation of this word is neither and neither as well. Okay. That's something. The that's same different. is when either neither. Either either. Correct. Either or either. Mm -hmm. That's correct. <clears throat> okay. Now let's get to the main topic that you want to know. Yes, sir. These conjunctions like but also in are just to connect two ideas, okay? But these pair conjunctions, they usually go together to make uh, different meanings. Like, wait a second, I'm gonna write it next to them. No, I'm gonna move it first. Okay, here, okay. Now I'm gonna explain when we use each one of this. The one that it says not only, but also, you can use it to add information or to give extra surprise. Like that, okay? You can use it in that way. To add extra information, or to use it as surprise. An example of this, well, I'm gonna give you examples later. Now, let's go with neither or nor. Either, I mean, either or or. In this case, you're gonna use it for choice. When you have, like uh, the classmate said, I think it was Marlon, when you have an affirmative choice, you can use either or. Then we have neither or neither, nor, neither nor. Nor is the affirmative, is the negative way of saying or, okay? Nor, it's the negative of or. Now, in this case, you can use it for negation or negative statements. And the last one, it's, 
including someone or including something. Let's get to examples now. Uh, blue color. Okay, here. Let's go not only, but also. Oops, sorry, what happened? Not only he can speak English. Okay, so I'm telling you something. He can speak English, but not only that, not only he can speak English, but also French. You see the idea here in this case? I'm adding extra information or I'm making it like a surprise. Not only you can speak English, but also French, like adding that information. That's when I use that pair conjunction. The next one, it's choice, the one that I'm telling you. Wait a second. <clears throat> Here, I'm gonna write it here. Either or, okay? Either you can go with me or your, let's say, or your friend, yeah, friend. So this is a choice. Either you can go with me or with your friend, I'm sorry. Or it sounds better. Or with your friend. I'm giving you a choice. Either you can go with me or your friend. Let's just not only, but also either or. Okay. Let's go with another example. Negation. Neither. I was invited, nor neither I was invited, nor included in the party. Ni siquiera me invitaron, menos me incluyeron. Neither I was invited, nor included in the party. So I'm giving a negative context to this. This is a negation. I was not invited, nor included. Okay, so far, are you getting the idea? Hello? Yes, in the yes. page 11 of the manual, there are some examples only with the not only, but also in both and, mm -hmm. but in the, in the platform, there are uh, exercises with need or nor. Oh, okay. So you needed to know a little bit more about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and um, as I'm telling you, neither and nor are for negative statements, but we're just going to go with the last example. Okay, I'm sorry, you can play both. You can play both soccer and let's say another basketball. You can play both soccer and basketball. And I'm using this one, both and, okay? And that's just to add or include something else to the statement. Again, we're gonna go again with this. So the first one is to add information, extra information and extra surprise. Not only the statement, but also the rest of the statement. Either or to give a choice, neither nor for a negative statement or negation. And both and to include something else to the statement. Is this, is this a little bit better now for you? guys? 
Yes. Yeah, teacher. Yes. It's more yes. clear. It's clear. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Before I forget, like yesterday, because I did forget yesterday, I'm going to go with the attendance because I had a few students at the beginning. Axel Gabriel Rivera Rodriguez. Is he the one that said he was sick on the chat? I think, I don't know. I heard someone saying that. Well, I saw someone saying that. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. Present teacher. Blanca Stephanie Navarro Flores. No? Present, present, present teacher. Okay. David Samuel Caldames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present. Fátima Lourdes Gaitán Romero. Present. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Francisco Amadeo Villacorta Chávez. I'm here, teacher. Freddy Vladimir Cortés López. I'm here. Harvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present, teacher. Kenia Esmeralda Galvez Ruiz. Present. Madeline Yamilet Molina González. Manuel de Jesús Sánchez Hernández. Present teacher. Marlon Stanley Ramírez Reyes. Present teacher. Telma Cleotilde Peña Martínez. Present. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. No está William, okay. Jessica Yanari Cortés Díaz. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see what is happening. So I have one, two, three students who didn't connect today. Three. Huh. Okay. I hope they can connect to, like, can connect the next class. Okay, let's go back here. Here we have a conversational topic today, and the conversational topic today is about millennials. Do you know who are the millennials? No? No. No, you, you don't know about the millennials? No, teacher. No. I think it is the people who was born in the 80s or 90s. I, I don't remember well. We will need to look into a chart, yes. But I myself, the finish of the 80s. I myself, the finish of the 80s. Sorry. The, the end of the 80s. Yeah, like I think it was by the end of the 80s. Let me check that really quick. But I myself, I am a millennial. I am. So let's are see. They, are the sons of the baby boomers? <laughs> yeah. Some are baby boomers, yes. Let me check. Okay, so here is the situation. Wow, wow, okay. It's interesting now to see at it. Look at this. Here is one. The boomers were born between the 1955 and 1964. Okay. The Gen Z, I mean the Gen X, the Gen X, they were born between 65 and 80. The millennials, which I am one, we were born between the 1981 and the 1996. And we have the new generation, which I'm not part of. <laughs> it's the 1997 to the 2012 or 2012. So there's a big difference between one generation and another generation. In English, they are called generational or generation gaps. 
gaps, gaps meaning like a space between them. Generation gap means that we have differences, even though we live in the same country, we live in the same planet, and we're living in the same moment right now, we think differently. And we have different thoughts about different stuff. So the millennials, this, this uh, book was about the millennials, but now I think it's not about the millennials anymore. It's about the Gen Z. They are the ones doing the things now because they are the future. Well, they, they are the future right now. Okay, so the millennials, is, the topic we have today is about the millennials and how millennials think. Maybe not all millennials think the same way, but they sure share, a, I don't know, like a feeling or something about that because we were born in the same stuff. Like the Gen Z, if you see little kids, well, they, they are not even a generation. The people that the kids were, the, 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 so they were born in the pandemic. We're gonna, maybe we're gonna call them pandemic babies. I don't know how we're gonna call them, but they, <laughs> maybe they're gonna be called pandemic babies. I have seen a lot of videos where the kids, they go to different places and they are like this. They are waiting for the hand sanitizer. They are with that in mind. They are wearing the face masks and they, they do it unconsciously. Like they, they don't think about it, they just do it. So those are the pandemic babies, maybe. That's what, what we're gonna call them. And now with the, what is this? The monkey box. Have you heard about the monkey box? Yes. So with the, like the, that in, in Spanish will be, Virula del mono? Virula del mono, yes. Yeah, the monkeypox is another virus that Virula. is going around right now. And it's a heavy one. It's really bad. So I don't know. There are a lot of pandemics coming on. So maybe this generation is going to be called the pandemic babies. Who knows? Or maybe <laughs> the apocalypse. The apocalypse babies? Yeah. <laughs> but let's better call them the Soy Leyenda Babies or something like that yeah. because you're going to survive everything like that by the end. I'm a legend. <laughs> I'm a legend. The legend babies, exactly. I don't know, but it's going to be like that. So, but right now, we're going to talk about specifically about the millennials because they are the workforce right now. And just to make a conversation, we're going to answer these questions right here. The first question we have there, can you help me reading the question, Fredis? Yes. Have you heard the term millennium? Thank you. Thelma? But that's not me. Thank you. Fernando? Uh, are you a millennial? Thank you. Francisco. This is D. At the end is D, but it's raised, but it's D. Okay. Uh, what is important to know who to management? What is? Lead. Manage lead. Manage lead. This group of employees. Okay. This is how. Okay. Thank you. Um, Andres, uh, are there members of other generations, e.g., baby boomers, Gen X, at your workplace? Thank you very much. E.g., you know what is the meaning of e.g., guys? For example, exactly. example given, example given, yes, baby boomers, Gen X, and at your workplace. So why are they talking about millennials? Because right now we are the workforce. Even though we are the workforce guys, I'm surprised that I have, what is this, coworkers that they were born in 2003. And when I have those coworkers, I'm like, am I really old? Am I old, <laughs> me? Me, me, I, I'm not old. I don't think I'm old, but why do we have co-workers <laughs> who were born in the 2000s? That's crazy. That's just crazy to me. But the thing is, people born in the 2000s, 
they are 22 now and it's crazy. So people born in the 2003, they are 19, I will say, they are 19 now. People weren't, who were born in the 2004, they are adults. They are 18 years old. So that's crazy. That's just crazy to me. So they are the workforce now. We just don't know about it. So we're going to answer these questions with uh, the classmates. So we're going to go to break the rooms and we're going to discuss these questions. Take the time to speak. I need you to speak, but very important, let your classmates speak. Give them the chance to speak. Don't be the one that holds on the mic and you're speaking and speaking and speaking like the teacher, right? <laughs> it's your time to shine, not my time to shine. It's your time to shine and do your best and speak as much as you can. You're gonna discuss these questions. I'm gonna read them again for you just to clarify some pronunciations there. Have you heard the term millennial? What does it mean? Are you a millennial? Why is it why is it important to know how to manage, lead this group of employees? Are, the, are there members of other generations, for example, baby boomers, Gen X at your workplace? In the workplace, <laughs> this is just me, guys. Maybe it's going to be different for you. I told you that I work at a public school in the mornings. Most of my classmates, I mean, my coworkers, most of my coworkers are baby boomers. Most of them, like they are 50, 60. I think the younger one is 43 years old. So they are, they are not my generation. So they don't get me. Sometimes when I, when I speak, they don't get me. But it's just because it's a different generation and we have generational gaps. Okay, uh, take a screenshot of this, please. And we're gonna go and discuss these questions. And the question that is there, why is it important to know how to manage, lead this group of employees? It's because for the millennial group, I don't know, I have a lot of millennial pairs here. I think many of you are millennials as I am. For me, maybe for you, it's not important, but for me, mental health, it's really important. Like even like if a work environment is toxic, like we say nowadays, right? I'm not comfortable with it. Maybe I do need the money, but I won't take it for a long time because my mental health is important. With some other generations, they will say, y yo iba a trabajar con 39 grados de temperatura y un brazo recién cortado. Y así trabajábamos so, the, But that was before. I think my generation, maybe, maybe it's just me, it's different. We're like, no, I'm going to die one day and nobody here in this workplace will remember me. <laughs> so my health is my priority. That's just how to manage and how to lead millennials. Okay, we're gonna go and we're gonna discuss the questions. Do you have the questions? Did you take a screenshot of the questions? Yep. And David is in the same, oh, I always forget that David it has two devices. Okay. David, your, both Hello. of your accounts are in the same room, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, let's go and talk about it.
Yes, sir. This boomer, baby boomers song. Baby boomers are because. Baby uh, boomers are, uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, like the mother of the, of the millennials. Baby boomers are, are, are the older generation and they was named baby boomer because are the generation of the atomic bomb. The, the, the bomb was named baby boom. In the, yes, the people but, milli who, who but millennial or uh, um, baby boomers song millennial or not? No, millennials are older. Millennial songs boomer, baby boomer. Millennials are younger than baby boomer. Right? The, the next generation after yes. the baby boomer. Yes. Yes. Yes, they was born in eighties and nineties. These are those are the millennials. Yeah, and because, uh, they the millennials like like the virtual uh, virtual intelligence. So, um, uh, is the uh, the next generation? <laughs> I have many, many type of employees so different. I have a baby boomers. I have an ex uh, generation of uh, millennium and etc. So I so different. We are so different. But they can talk it. It's so it's generational, it's general. Yeah? You can change uh, all the kind of the people. Yeah, they are also uh, open minded. Okay. Um, I don't know. I think that's free, no open mind. Open mind, you have studied so much. If you study so much, you have an open mind. Yeah? If you don't start, you have a close in your mind, in your eyes. Yeah, but I think it, it refers more to, uh, you know, that uh, our I don't know, our parents or grandparents, they, they are more like strict. And in this generation, it like uh, that don't exist that much. It's like the time is, is changing and they are more open-minded than them. They are more receptive to new ideas, but I mean that that there is also an, an exception in other generations. Yeah, like in our generation, there are people who are like the old generation. That there mm -hmm. there are like many many. Yeah, I get it. Okay, uh, okay we we're asking you, um, Madeline. What generation are you? Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe. How old maybe. are you? How old are you? Uh, at twenty-five. Mm -hmm. You are in millennial. between. No, but she's in between. Well, yeah, she's more millennial, but she's yeah. in between. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> uh, she's nineteen ninety-six. Exactly. That's why I'm telling you that she's in between. Yeah, you are yeah. from the 1996, right, Madeline? Uh, yes. Okay. 1996. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. What about you? For me, for you are a millennium. Um, yes, I'm millennial. Mm -hmm. But I don't understand what. Okay, are the what I think about millennials? In depression. Depression. Depression in the world on or the life is different. Ah, uh, other. 
What about the pressure? If the pressure is good for millennials or bad? Um, I think uh, the pressure, I don't know. Uh, that's something uh, that it's really, probably it depends on the, uh, each person. It's not something about
Hello. Well, everybody's coming to the main, main session. It's only 5, 15 seconds. Okay. So, well, the topic there in the breakout rooms was millennials, right? And how they are in the workplace, how they are in the workforce. More than a topic to discuss about the working environment, I heard some breakout rooms where it became a polemic topic. It was like a controversial topic, which I understand because, because as I told you before, every generation is different. Every generation has different opinions and different things. But how millennials are in the workplace was the question. Now, how Gen Z is gonna be in the workplace is the question that we're gonna be asking now. But the thing, the thing that I don't know if maybe many people got it or not is that millennials, how are millennials with technology? What do you think about millennials and technology? They are uh, related millennials in technology. They, they, they were born in the technology age. Okay. So we were born in the technology era, but like yes. the revolution of technology. That's when, when we were born, right? We do know um, a world without internet because I remember how was the world without internet. I remember it. And I remember those phones. I don't know. A phone can be really big, right? Like this, hello, like this. They, they were really big. I remember that. <laughs> exactly. And they, they were like, <laughs> you can, I remember the Nokias. The Nokias, they were the best phones. Like the battery will last for a long time and stuff like that. And I the remember Blackberry? the Blackberries. Yeah, the, those were. I think those were the best phones for the millennials. <laughs> but the Nokia's endured forever. <laughs> yeah, the Nokia's were the forever phones, yes. yes. But there's the thing that we know a world without the internet, but we are really related to the internet and we're really related to the computers, phones and technology stuff as well. That's why, for example, in my workplace, my coworkers, my boss, like almost everybody, even the secretary, they asked me to do things on the computer. Not because I am a, a master in the computer skills and stuff like that, but I'm a millennial. That's why they asked me to do those stuff. I'm, I'm saying again, not all the millennials can use computers as well because there are some millennials that they don't like to use computers and that's okay. It's, it's different stuff. Then, um, how, how is beneficial for a business to have a millennial? How is that a benefit? Is it, is it a benefit to have millennials in the workforce? Of course. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Can, can you tell me one benefit? We can adapt to every environment, I think, or a because the example that you told about the technology, we, if it's something we don't know, we can learn very, really fast about it. And, and I think that it's a benefit for the, for the, yeah, I forgot the word. The word for the environment. <laughs> For the business, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think that for the business is a good, a good thing because we can learn really fast or related fast. So it's okay. a good. Okay, thank you, Blanca. Thank you for your comment. Yeah, like not not all the people. That's what I'm saying. Don't think about this. Like no, but you're gonna be millennial. Can so, now? Yeah, maybe you do. Maybe you do. And I know many baby boomers who can use computers. That's a different topic. But the thing is that most of us, we were born, my grandpa says, nacieron con la computadora bajo el brazo. That's what my grandpa says, right? Like we were born like that. And we were born with, with phones. But the Gen Z, the ones that are coming to the workforce, they don't know a word without the internet. 
they don't know it. They have always had internet and they hope they will continue to have internet for the rest of their lives. Now, how can we be, or <laughs> what can we do if we don't have internet? That's a question that we can ask to the baby boomers, right? Because you remember how it was like with, without it and you don't, maybe you didn't need it back then, but you need it now, right? You need it now. For example, this class, will you think this class be possible without the internet? Sorry, what, no. what the question? Will, do you think this class will be possible without the internet? No. Of no. course not. No, right? Uh -huh. live in San Salvador, some people live here in Colón, some people live in Chalatenango, some people live in different places. I live in Osudotan. So it won't be possible, not at all. Now, many people became technology people before, no, no, after, not before, no, no nobody, after the pandemic, was because the pandemic made us use the computers, use Zoom. I remember back then, like 2018, I got some workshops on Zoom and webinars and stuff like that. But I didn't do like a lot of Zoom calls. Now, Zoom, Zoom is something that I use every single day. Every single day. I use it every single day. It's like a social network to me. It's like a social, I use Zoom more than I use my bank account app. That's, that's it, <laughs> right? That's what, that's what we do, that, that's how we use Zoom. Okay, now, do you, okay, I'm, I'm telling you this because when I was in the breaker rooms, I heard like you were, I don't know, how can I say this? Like the term millennial to some people is a negative term. I don't know why they have it like that, but it's like a negative term. I don't know if you have realized that. Many people are like, like, oh, well, los millennials, like, hey, millennial, yeah. Some, sometimes, sometimes people think like that. But the thing is, millennials can use technology, as you said before. Millennials can adapt to many work um, environments. Yes and no. I will say that the baby boomers were more persistent, right? I don't know what you will think. Help me out with this if you have different comments about it. La I think that millennials are taken as a bad because they were who was starting to break the rules. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the baby, no, the generation, X uh, was uh, like very strict. Exactly, exactly. Well, that yeah. it's interesting, Kenya, your opinion because I heard you the same opinion in another breaker room. <laughs> yes, that's another thing that gen the millennials we were the people who asked the question, but why? Like, hey, I need you to do this. Yes, why? And many people don't like that, right? Like, or sometimes the boss will say, um, you need to do this activity. And I'm guessing the X generation or the baby boomers, they would be like, hey, okay, yes, I, I, I will do it. Don't worry, I will do it and this and that. But some millennials, I'm not telling like every single millennial, but some millennials would be like, is that my obligation? Is that my job? Do I have to do it, right? Maybe you're smiling or laughing or thinking one time you did it, right? Like, mm, maybe, is it my obligation? It's not your obligation? But, and that's why people don't like it because questioning was not part of the game, right? Like it was not a part of the game. So yeah, that's why, but they need us. They need millennials. For example, social media marketing, like social media managers. Who are the social media media managers? The baby boomers, the, the Gen Z. Who are them? 
social media, maybe millennials. Millennials, millennials yes. Correct. Correct. Yeah, there are there are new social medias in that are from the C generation, but exactly. Yes, but the first uh, like Facebook, like Instagram, is for the uh, millennial. Okay, yeah, that's something I would like to take your comment, David. For me, yeah. It's, for me, it's the social media managers. Yeah. The because X generation. Yes, I am X. You're an, X. you're the and X generation. I am X generation. Yeah. Uh -huh. And. I learned with the when the born Facebook. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can but you have an ex with so with the experience, yeah, with the so experience in the technology is so different. Yeah. The millennial is so good, but the, the generation is general, not specific. Mm -hmm. I do the same thing, it's general. But uh -huh. if you have a if you have a manager, you are you have a if you are a, so sorry, if you are a, a manager, if you are a leader, you have to understand if you have a X, boomers, millennial, or C. Mm -hmm. All the person are different. Yeah. In my case, if I was a if my, if I was a manager, I would put a boomer, a Gen Z, a millennial, and an X generation together <laughs> to work on an idea that will be so interesting. Yes, but if, 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 you, if you want to, to take a one employees, the new employees, millennial. You have to take a one millennial, no an X for the new employees. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, a manager the, for the new employees. For the, the manager or the, the employees, the millennial. It's so, Perfect because you can change the person. Mm -hmm. you, the, the millennial could be cool, will cool, no, 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 will get the culture of the company. Mm -hmm. But the ex never will get the culture of the company. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, that's why, that's why different generations have different benefits to the companies as uh, Erwin is saying, right? Like the X generation, they are really hard workers, I will say, and as the baby boomers, they are really, really, really hard workers and they are really not, dedicated to the, not this job. No, don't work the baby the, boomers? No teacher, no. The, the, the X and, the, and the, the X, my generation, and the baby boomers, we have experience, but mm -hmm. we are slowly. Like vegetable, <laughs> yeah. I know this one. This is my. I, I try. I try. I listen my employees. I listen my 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 customer. I am a teacher. I, I listen that the general. Did you have a? For example, me. I am fast, but when I was younger, I was so fast. Than yeah, 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 of course. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a, the real the real thing. Yeah, it's and that is not about generation thing. It, that is about age, right? Like the age. With the age, people get slow, and that's okay. They have experience, but they are slow. That's what you're saying. Yes. And the millennials, we're fast, but we don't have experience. That's what you're yes. saying, right? But you can change. You can change the millennial way. Change. If, if you are a good leader, you can change the mind. You can change the uh, how what the the. the Technology, you can change that. So easy, mm -hmm. so easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. What this is your job position, Erwin? I am, I am a comp, I am a, I have my enterprise. I have a company. I am a businessman. Oh, you're a businessman. Yeah, I am a businessman. I have a, I, I, but many years ago, I was a manager, okay, in my company. Uh -huh. I was a manager 15 years, no, 20 years, I have a manager. After okay. that, I have my company. I know this one so, okay. because I I need to know this one because uh, if you want to have a good company, you have a technology, finances, and people. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you for your comment, Erwin. And I think now I get you. Now I get what you mean. And you think, well, with all the examples that I heard through all the breaker rooms, that are benefits on having millennials in the workplace. But now let's think about the benefits on having Gen 
Z at the workplace. Do you think there's a benefit to that? The Gen Z? I don't think we have a Gen Z here, do we? Yes. I think that have a Gen Z uh, employees are really good for the ideas because they are fresh, really fresh mind. So they have really good <laughs> ideas. I, I have the experience with the son of my of my boss mm -hmm. oh my god when he talk he always have a good idea to have to uh, renew or how can i say how the how we can change about the sales about the the what we sell on the company and and i think i i, I admire uh, all the ideas that he he came up with. Okay, and what, how old is this person? Sorry, uh, he has. He is. Yeah, sorry, he is 20, 20 years old. Twenty years old. Well, that, that's really young. Yes, yes, twenty years old. They are Gen Z. Yeah, they have good ideas. As um, and they need. They maybe just they just need to shape the ideas, but they do really have good ideas. For example, if you want to advertise your company through TikTok, who is the best person to do that? If you want to advertise your company through TikTok, okay, okay. What do you need to do? The new generation. <laughs> the, gen new, the new generation. You know why? Because. Maybe this is, I don't know, this is complicated to me, but I'm not good at using TikTok. <laughs> if I have to admit that, I'm not really good at using TikTok. I can play videos and I can do stuff, but sometimes when I have to like edit a video, I'm like, I'm done. I'm, I'm not going to continue with that. Like I can do it, but I cannot add all the effects and the transitions they do and the dances they do. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. You know what? I'm going to continue watching just watching wait a second guys it's time to continue with the oh my god time goes fast axel gabriel rivera rodriguez is not here andres is this axel here no right it's not andres giovanni valdivieso portillo blanca stephanie navarro flores present david samuel caldames monterrosa Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present teacher, sorry, okay. I was off my mic. Okay, sorry. it's okay. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Fátima Lourdes Gaitán Romero. Present. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Um, Francisco Amadeo Villacorta Chávez. Present teacher. Fredis Vladimir Cortés López. Present teacher. Harvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Kenny Esmeralda Gabriel, I mean Galvez, Galvez Ruiz. Present. Madeline Yamilet Molina González. Present teacher. Manuel de Jesús Sánchez Hernández. Present teacher. Marlon Stanley, Stanley Ramírez Reyes. Present. Telma Cleotilde Peña Martínez. Present. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Jessica Yanari Cortez Díaz. Jocelyn Imelda Rivas Abarca. Present. Okay, perfect. I'm going to stay today with Harbin and I will see you guys tomorrow. Esto se fue como, like, the topic was too polemic to let it go. <laughs> but now we're going to continue cool with Harbin. Yeah, it was a good topic, I know. Okay, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank Have you. Have a great Bye. night. Bye. Take care. Harbin, welcome. Okay, hello, teacher. How are you? Everything is fine. Everything what about you? I'm doing good. It's a little bit hot in here in, in the Sultan yeah. right now. Yeah, because it wanted to rain, but it didn't. So it's a little bit hot. Here in right this is a little bit cold. Yeah, because you live in that part of the country. <laughs> and I live really close to the beach. It's like 40 minutes. 
Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's it's great. <laughs> yeah, that's my, that's maybe why. Okay, Harbin, how can I help you? Do you have any doubts in any topics? In the topics about this course, I have to be honest and I have to read the manual. If I have to find some doubt that I can have, but right now I have I I was thinking about it when you told me that I have to stay here today, and I was thinking about it, and I was thinking that the, my my problem is my listening. I need to improve. I try some ways that someone told me. I was listening music in English. And I was watching movies in English. I was watching series in English, but I can improve it and I don't know why. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what kind of movies and what kind of series were you watching? Oh, funny series, funny movies. Can you give me an example of a title? Oh, Friends. Yeah, that's, that's a good one to start with. Yeah. Yes. But the, here's the situation. I started watching series online when I was almost gradu graduating from college, like series, like full, full series in English, but with subtitles in English because that was easier to my, like for me. This is the something that I, I would like to tell you because I was watching with subtitles and I lost my focus because I was reading and I lost the the, the, the way that the series is happening. You I had the subtitles in English or Spanish? And English. Oh, okay, okay. So here's the other thing that you can do. I have told this to some students and it works for them. Maybe what you can do is try to watch cartoons. Don't watch TV series, shows, movies, they are too complicated with the language. Your mind right now is like the mind of a baby learning a new thing. So cartoons are easier to understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for example, try to watch cartoons, they use the same language. And maybe you're gonna be like, ah, why do I have to watch cartoons? I'm an adult and things like that. For me, sometimes watching yeah, cartoon is entertaining. It's, it's, yeah. it's good, yeah, it's entertaining. So what you need to do is try to watch them and watch them in English and mm -hmm. let your mind sink there. Just try to watch it and don't, don't, you don't need the subtitles, you don't need anything, just let your mind be. Because they make these cartoons for people, for me, little babies, that barely understand the language. So for you, it's gonna be easier to understand. After you watch those cartoons, try to watch more complicated cartoons. Maybe the first one that you need to watch are like Dora la Exploradora. Maybe Dora the Explorer is gonna be like, no, oh, but why that is too easy like, to watch and stuff like that. But yeah, it's not for babies. It's gonna help you with your English. Then you can go ahead and watch other type of, types of cartoons. I don't know, any other cartoon that you like and has a good story, then you need to go slowly, slowly, slowly watching different types of things and then watch Friends. But first, go through all the stages because if you jump right onto Friends, it's going to be like your mind is not ready for it. That's why, that's what you're saying, that many people advise you to do that but you cannot do it and you don't understand why, but it's because you're putting your mind to work on something that is difficult for your mind. Yes, I got it because I, I think I have that problem because for example, in my job, I receive a lot of email in English and every single Wednesday, we have a meeting with American people. I have to say American people so that sometimes uh, or some of them has a, a beautiful accent when they are speaking I understand everything but when another people was talking I a lot of I total loss I mm -hmm. confused and I I don't know why I can understand and okay. they, are, they are talking the same mm -hmm. 
the but same it's topic. But it's because sometimes people who speak English, like people who speak Spanish, they speak it really fast. Maybe that's mm -hmm. why you were lost. I think. And people, when they get excited, like they start to speak really fast and they don't realize about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So you work in a call center now? No, I work as a con a con manager. And oh yeah, 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 you're the one who works at as a con manager. And what is the name of your company? Confecciones del Valle. Confecciones del Valle. So, and you are an account manager, and when you are in the meetings, there's not a trans, there is not an interpreter there. No, it's oh. full English. So you have to understand. Yes, we work for for Columbia Brand. Okay, okay. Uh huh. So the we have to to have the meeting in in full English. Sometimes we I don't get it the principal idea. My my boss help me, but. It's a so confecciones del valle is about clothing, right? Yes. Because when you say del valle, my mind thought about juice. <laughs> juice, yes. Yeah. I get it. Oh, okay. So you work actually you so confecciones del valle makes clothes for Colombia. Yes. Ah, I get it now. Okay, okay. So yeah, you need to practice a lot of English, but so far. Well, you understand what I'm speaking and you perfectly can answer back to me. So I don't think you're in a bad position right now. Remember that you still have six months to go because you have the six modules that are left to this course. And after those six modules, you can practice more. I always advise my students to go into, if they like to do it, that, uh, that is optional. Maybe you can pay one month in an academy to speak really advanced English and to speak with people who speak English, like native English, like Escuela Americana. Yes. Like people who speak really like native English. But that's just if you want to improve like to the max level, your English level. But otherwise, I think you're good, Harbin. I, I, I don't see a really big trouble there. I remember my first time in the United States. I was, I don't know, I was speaking really bad. I barely understood some things. Sometimes I got really confused. And I was about to graduate from college. So eh, it will take time. It, it will come with the practice, Harvin. Okay. And the good thing that you have is that you have meetings in English. So you yes. get to hear native people speaking. And that's a yes. good point. Yes, but I feel bad sometimes when I don't understand everything. With the practice, don't worry. With the practice, you'll get it. Okay. Okay. Well, Harvin, it's time to go already and I need to, okay. <laughs> I need to sleep a little bit because I have to wake up really early in the morning again. And it was my pleasure. I will see you tomorrow, okay? See you, Tisha. Okay, bye. Okay. Have a good night. Bye-bye.